was constantly in denial that I was there and I just wanted to find a way to get out. I called my mom and told her where I was and she was shocked. Your doctor mixed up the days and he thought you had been here for a while. Your actual projected day to leave will be on Monday. Are you kidding me? I took more naps and then went to my usual awareness training and interventions. And they knock on my door while I'm asleep and tell me my bosses are here for visitation. Am I finally gonna get out of here? Hey Science, how's it going? We're here to check up on you and see how you're doing. So you're not here to free me? What? Nothing. So I got to talk to them and they learned more about me and I learned more about them. I told them all I want to do is make animations and inspire people and teach kids how to draw. I also told them how I do YouTube and TikTok and turns out they watched some of my videos. One of my bosses actually got eye surgery like me and the other one draws every day. He told me he scopes pictures out of the fog on the mirror after he gets out the shower so his wife can see right before he goes to work. That's that's so sweet. <laughs> we bonded for about an hour and that was the height of my day. Later, I was told by my doctor after eating my vegan burger and fries that I'd be picked up on Monday at 10 a.m. This place is very unsanitary for a hospital. Literally no shower shoes. It's Friday now, Friday the 13th. Two days ago, it was 9-11. One of the oddest weeks of my life. This morning, I was woken up by a Hispanic lady around 9 a.m. for breakfast. I told her I wasn't hungry and she persisted. As I said before, breakfast is not vegan. So I got my potatoes and went back to my room to eat away from everyone else. I personally, as a vegan, can't stand to eat in the presence of egg or meat. After breakfast, I go ahead and lay down in my bed. It's time to go outside. Um, I'd rather take a nap. Thank you. You need to go outside. It will help you with your depression. But I'm outside. So I'm outside with everyone and I'm wearing the same gown I've been wearing for three days. I'm starting to smell, but they don't have shower shoes. And I refuse to take a shower in a public restroom with no foot protection. It's time to go back inside. And I try to go take a nap, but it's time for a group. And it's just a group of me and this other guy. Let's just call him Sid. The group was about mindfulness and why it's useful in life. While I was doing this mindfulness exercise, it took me back to a time in my life when I was sitting around in the sand at church camp, a skill I'll use more often. After that, we had a bigger group and the topic was anger. Everyone shared what made them angry and we learned how to manage it. But there was one story that really stood out to me by a lady, we'll just call her Miss Teach, told us about a time she had to deal with a student who was about to, what are you doing? What? You can't stop it. I'm, I'm going to pee on you. What? She doesn't teach there anymore. Fascinating how she managed her anger. Later that day, I got some new clothes and I was about to take a shower. But right when I was about to walk in my room, someone engaged conversation with me. It was a young female with really big curly hair and a really sad reason as to why she was there. Her husband cheated on her multiple times and he hardly gives any money to help support her two children. And he planned on leaving her homeless. On top of that, her family lived in a totally different country. As bad as it sounds, there's always a solution to every problem. So I told her, 